good morning to all so we can continue with the discussion that was happening we were discussing about this changing and unchanging temporary and permanent so we can continue with that over to ganesh ji welcome everybody sir what's the equivalent of paramodial activity in hindi it can be translated as mulbhut so the mulbhut kriya or vastavikta is primordial activity next question which is about sound yes we were asking about what is sound so i mean one important thing to understand is that when we are defining these things you know like sound or smell or touch or things like that basically we are defining it with respect to the five senses in human being so if you look at the human being look at ourselves these are the five senses right, which the self is using through the body to access the information from the world outside so these five senses can be identified as sound as touch as sight taste and smell and this we are accessing through the ears skin eyes tongue and nose so the basic reference is the senses of human being through which the self is accessing the information about the world outside through these five organs of the body so the basic identification of sound is with respect to this sense of sound through the ears with respect to these five senses we have categorized this external inputs right or information about the external world so sound is the activity which is sensed by the ear but if you look at any reality outside it has many you know aspects of it and one of them is the sound which i am accessing through my ears so this is the basic definition if you ask what is sound this is how it is defined with respect to the five senses of the human being later on this is generalized generalized for certain range of vibrations mm -hmm. and can be described in terms of you can see and in terms of the and so on mm -hmm. yeah so this is what i would say is the sound yes you are saying something yes when it comes to you know um, in various traditions it is said no that shabd or the word or first there was the word or the sound so um there that primordial sound that they speak of yeah this is um, quite interesting and quite important that many of the traditions you know in the west and in the east uh, is talking about this you know, in the beginning was the words right or in the beginning was the sound or in the beginning was the activity so i can explain what is being said and then we can you know work on it so as we mentioned before that there is a whole range of activity if you look at the nature there is whole range of activity from very gross to very subtle mm. this is this range of activity we see very subtle activities and we see very gross activities so we have a mountain which is a very gross activity and then we have you know or like you know you look at this uh, um, sea for example so there is it is a very gross thing you know gross activity that we see but then there are fine you know waves running over the sea and this is you know something very subtle whole range of uh, activities starting from very gross to very subtle the one is subtle most primordial activity this is what we are calling as primordial activity and the sound of this activity is what is called the primordial sound but now this is not something that we can hear through our senses yeah i'm i'm coming to that yeah yeah so what you were saying is that this primordial activity cannot be identified through the senses mm yes so what is being said is that this can be identified by the self right mm -hmm. to the senses of the body but it can certainly be identified by the self and interestingly what is being said is that you know this the subtle most, most activity is the one which can be sensed by the self of course not through the body but directly by the self but which cannot be identified as a definite unit mm -hmm. so they the you know the, one of the difference that they uh, make is that you know the one which can be identified as an unit or as something you know some uh, thing definite definite conduct and something which cannot be identified as, as an unit with definite conduct mm -hmm. and the word that is used is ling aling 
Ling is the one which can be identified. A ling is one which cannot be identified. Mm -hmm. So what is being said is that the self has the capacity to see the subtler and subtler things. And at the level of realization, we can see the subtle most activity, which cannot be identified as a unit. And what is being said is that this primordial activity, I mean, this is what is called as primordial activity. And this primordial activity is something which continues to be in space. So we have this primordial activity and we have this in space, in coexistence in space, space which is all pervading. So mm -hmm. the basic building block for all the grosser activities and ultimately all the units in nature in existence. And this is what is called as Mahatattva. So what uh, Goelji was asking, you know, so what is Mahatattva? So this is the Mahatattva. This <clears throat> is the building block of all the grosser activities. The activities which can be identified as units, but very subtle, and all the grosser units that we see around in nature. And this is the one which remains, you know, uh, there. And all that we see, you know, the grosser aspects of nature are getting, uh, are the basically the expression of this subtle most activity. So when you are able to see this subtle most activity, then you are able to see that all that you know is taking place in terms of creation of grosser and grosser units and also the you know destruction of it ultimately you know it is there at the level of this subtle most activity at the level of this primordial activity so if you look at this patanjali yoga sutra for example it says that when we go about looking at the subtle things the subtle most that we have to see is this activity which is aling, which is unidentified as a unit with definite conduct. But you can sense it that yes, there is an activity, there is a movement, there is vibration. But it cannot be identified as a unit with a definite conduct. The next grosser thing is that activity which can be identified as a unit with a definite conduct. And basically that is what is called as Parman. Parmanu means the smallest, you know, unit that we can identify with definite conduct. So, I mean, one of the description is that, you know, we have this space, the all pervading. Then we have this primordial activity in space. And this primordial activity is what is the building block for all the units in nature, all the grosser units in nature. And this coexistence of this primordial activity in space in all pervading space is you know the basic starting point of all that we see in nature um this uh when we are saying this how can we relate it to uh you know what what is generally thought of as the big bang theory is uh, how it all started yeah <clears throat> in fact there are many theories of creation mm -hmm. and one of this you know, which uh, we are talking about here. Uh, this, one of the thesis is this, you know, what we are talking about, like this primordial activity in space forms the basic building block for all the grosser activities. So what you see, what we see in nature, you know, as mountains and earth and seas and all those things are basically the, ex you know, expression of this primordial activity right, that we have just talked about. Mm. So this is one of the theses about creation, you know, how the creation is taking place. So what it says is that we have this primordial activity in space, which is subtle, and it is so subtle, you know, that we are not able to sense it through the body, but we can certainly sense it through the self, and that too, through the higher activities of the self that we have been talking about. So at the level of realization, we are able to observe the space and we are able to observe this primordial activity uh, <clears throat> in space. And this is the building block for all the grosser activities. Ultimately, all the units in nature in existence. And as I just mentioned, that this primordial activity, you know, the coexistence of this primordial activity in all pervading space expresses itself in the form of grosser and grosser activities. Mm -hmm. And all that we see in nature is the natural unfolding of this coexistence. So this is another, th you know, thesis about uh, creation. And I'm saying that it is a thesis in the sense that we take it as a proposal. Mm -hmm. And 
we can work, start working on it. And one of the interesting thing about this thesis is that all the gross and the social activities are existing together. Not that this primordial activity existed sometime and it is not there presently. No, the primordial activity is there and this primordial activity is expressing itself in the form of the grosser activity as an unit which we can identify as a unit with definite conduct. Then this unit is now combining with other units, other activity, still grosser activity. So like that, it is building up. But while it is building up, it is not that the lower, the subtler activity is lost. Mm. So they are all there as, you know, together. Like when an atom is combining with another atom and forming a molecule, it essentially means that one activity, a subtle activity is combining with another subtle activity and forming a grosser activity. Mm. And all of them are there together. So the atom as an activity is there, the another atom as activity is there, and this combined together is this molecule, which is a grosser activity, which is also there. So what is being claimed is that we can see all this through higher and higher activity of the self. So not that it existed sometime and now it does not, it is not no more there. Mm. So not that some big bang was there at one point of time, and now the Big Bang is not there. No, it has burst and it has resulted into this creation. All this primordial activity, starting from this primordial activity to grosser and grosser activities, which are, you know, expression of this primordial activity in space, they are all there together. And if we develop the capacity of the cell, if we develop, you know, this capacity to see things through higher and higher activities of the cell, we are able to see all these activities together, all the grosser and the subtle and the subtle most activity together. So here and now, it can be verified. But to verify this, right, ultimately, it is the self who is going to verify. Verify this, we have to develop our capacity of higher level of activity of the self. Mm. So we have to go right up to the realization, the activity of realization. And there we can see the space and we can see this primordial activity in space. Yes. Yeah, at the level of words, it, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, I suppose. Yeah, interesting, you know. <clears throat> I mean, what I would say is that we take it as a proposal, take it mm. as a thesis, and let us work on ourselves. Mm. And let us develop our capacity, you know, of observation. That is, we are able to see through higher and higher level of activity of the self. If you look at the way we are doing today, most of us are largely limited to the lowest activity of the self, that is selecting and testing. And that is the problem, that we are trying to see grosser, you know, kind of subtler things through the lowest activity of selecting and testing. So as I was mentioning last time, that as you move to higher and higher activity of the self, you are able to see more and more aspects of any given reality. Mm. Right? So when you are working at the level of selecting and testing, you are able to see the form, the sight of an unit, you know, the shape, size and color. But when you start working at the level of analyzing and comparing, at the level of thinking, you are also able to see the property of that unit. That is its effect on another unit, which you cannot see at the level of just selecting and testing. Mm. Similarly, if you move up and, you know, start looking at things at the level of contemplation, then you can see the purpose, <clears throat> right? You can see the relationship of this unit with other units. And also you can see the participation of this unit with respect to other units in nature. So you can see the relationship and you can see the purpose, the meaning, the value in relationship. Similarly, if you go still higher, you can see the self-organization of that unit. And if you go still higher to the level of realization, you can see that this unit is submerged in space. So all this we can see, but we have to evolve ourselves you know, and see through higher and higher activity of the self. So basically, when we want to see the subtler and subtler things, and ultimately even the space, which is no activity, then we have to evolve to higher activities of the self. So that evolution has to take place in the self, not outside. Today. You know, what we are doing is to able to see things, subtler things, we are trying to evolve things outside. You know, we are making the instrument of seeing outside more and more sophisticated rather than developing our own capacity of the self to see subtler and subtler things by way of accessing, you know, the higher activities of the self. But this is a thesis, I would say. Take it as a proposal and we can work on it. Because see, ultimately it is the self who has to see. 
whether it is seeing through the body whether it is seeing through the sense you know instruments that we are developing or whether it is seeing it through its own capacity of you know higher activities so today if you see mostly we are using the lowest activity of the cell that is selecting and testing and then the information that we get through this selecting and testing through these five senses we are using that as the basic information to use our analyzing and comparing mm. so all our data analysis and you know drawing conclusion out of it is limited at the level of analyzing and comparing we are not even going to the level of contemplation where we are able to see the relationship and we are able to see the participation relationship the purpose the value all that we are talking about you know in value education is that you know we should at least move up to the level of activity of contemplation mm-hmm. in the self then when we come down to analyzing and comparing come down to the selecting and testing we can see this with a purpose with relationship with values otherwise it is all directionless purposeless at least we don't understand the purpose which seems like a very formidable task though because uh, i mean uh, self is like a one small unit it seems compared to this whole vast existence so to be able to appreciate right from mm-hmm. the primordial sound to everything um that seems like quite a task yeah but it is very interesting i would say mm-hmm. even now what we are saying we are saying that this let's say for example this you know sea so much of water in sea is basically you know a lump of molecular structure right <laughs> now this is what we are saying isn't it mm. and then we are saying that the um, one molecule of atom of water is made up of you know hydrogen atoms two hydrogen atom and one oxygen atom and then we are saying that this hydrogen atom is also consisting of still you know subtler uh, kind of uh, unit right call it sub particles you know or something mm-hmm. so this is what we are trying to understand even through science through experiments in the world outside and what we are doing we are making certain observation right through these five senses mm-hmm. and then we are working on it in terms of drawing references i mean inferences out of this data that we have observed through the senses through the physical senses but who is doing all this the self is doing all this right but with the help of a lot of instruments and lot of other things yes so yeah. so what is being claimed is that it's good to take help of the body to access information it is also good to take help of the instruments you know to get the information about the world outside through these five senses so all these instruments that we have ultimately we are using it through these five senses mm so it is good to do all this but ultimately we have to evolve you know the active you know level of activity of the self okay so it is good to make your senses of the body finer good to make the instruments finer to observe you know subtler and subtler information but ultimately we have to evolve our activity of the self you know higher activity of the self so that we can see the subtler and subtler things which is going to go through right and you know, up to the primordial activity and the space mm-hmm. and the coexistence of the two because unless you see that we see we are not able to see two things number one we are not able to see the relationship harmony and coexistence which is the basic of you know our uh, feeling you know our natural acceptance and therefore we are not able to see you know how we can relate to other how we can organize ourselves how can we can, you know how we can relate to the other and so on so that purpose of life is not clear to us mm-hmm. and second thing is that we are not able to see something which is at the base of all this we see you know so much of variety in nature so there is so much of variety in nature and in that sense there is a creation and destruction but we are not able to see that there is something at the base of it which is not changing something at the base of it which is there and which is definite so this primordial activity in a space in all pervading space is something which is invariant right 
all creation is taking out place out of it and all destruction is ultimately going to this and this is important for us to see because when we can see that yes every creation is taking place out of this or is a natural expression of this and it is going back to that i am not you know disturbed by the creation or by the destruction so i can be with that definiteness that yes all this creation and destruction is a process of unfolding of this primordial activity and then going back to that primordial activity so you are with that primordial activity which is unchanging which remains as it is so you are not disturbed by the creation or by the destruction of this whole nature and lot of thing has been talked about this you know that all our uh, problem is because we are not able to see this basic thing so any creation you become excited right any destruction you get depressed so it has to do with your happiness and happiness your excitement or your state of peace you know, and be state of bliss so all our so called happiness and happiness is a state of excitement that we have been talking about right from the beginning and this excitement is coming and you know in the form of either getting you know into uh, ego or getting into depression is because we are not able to see this primordial thing you know which is basic building block for all this creation and destruction if we are able to see that then we are at peace you know we are in a state of bliss you know undisturbed by this process of creation and destruction so a whole lot of description is given about the one who is able to see this primordial activity in space in all pervading space so a lot of description about this sthita pragya the one who is able to see this primordial activity in space and is established in this understanding this knowledge but you know this seems to be a very formidable task but what we are trying to say is that let's bring it to education let every child get exposed to this and let them take it as a thesis and start working on themselves we have tried this with the external world with the external instruments you know making them finer and finer now let's work with the self also mm. yes let's work with the self also and see whether it works or does not yeah even though it does seem formidable that need to know is so strong that you feel that you have you one has to work for this yeah. yes and it is good to have these instruments you know which can see finer and finer details subtle and subtle things outside but it is also good to work with the self mm. and what we are saying is that if you are working with the self you will work with values because if you evolve to the level of contemplation you can see the relationship and you can see the values in this then all your science all your technology will be value based and this certainly will be fulfilling for you today what is happening is that we are evolving these instruments outside but it is not leading to the fulfillment within so it le- you know we should do things which are leading to fulfillment outside but also leading to fulfillment within so the instruments are becoming more powerful the self is becoming less powerful or feeling helpless but this is all proposal i mean i would say that let's take it as a proposal and start working on it and slowly make it part of education you know mainstream education where every child is exposed to these possibilities and they start working on it you know they do research development extension all they should do but let us give it as a possibility first let us you know we ourselves start working on it and then let us give it as a possibility to every child through the process of education then probably we will be able to solve many of the problems in the world today you know all these problems of in global warming and resource depletion and all this which are there because we have science and technology without the values without understanding the relationship without understanding the harmony understanding the coexistence so that we have to do anyway you know we have to understand this relationship harmony and coexistence even for the survival even for the physical survival of the human being and of the mother earth in all of this um you know we are not mentioning god so even when we are saying that everything emanated from that primordial activity so how did that primordial activity come about and um uh, 
you know uh, what in our opinion is this you know god or what we um, call god so what we are saying is that we have this all pervading space right and we have this primordial activity you know in all pervading space right and this is the building block you know this primordial activity the subtle most activity is combining with you know and forming this grosser and grosser activity mm. right and this grosser activity is what we are seeing as different units in nature so this nature is what we are calling as creation mm. and this creation is taking place by way of combination of this primordial activity in its all pervading space now this is what we are been just proposing you know uh, mm -hmm. one of the possible uh, way of looking at creation or the process of creation now if uh, and what we are saying primordial in the sense that it is there you know everything begins with this and this itself is beginningless in fact something has to be beginningless i mean go on you know uh, on and on that this came from this and this came from this but something has to be there to begin with and what is that something and can we understand this can we observe this can we see this that is the issue so this is the fundamental thing you know, which is there to begin with right and we can observe it we can see it we can understand it now if we take this as uh, the basic building block as something which exists and which can be observed directly and that's the only way to do it you know. there is no further you know cause and effect there this is the basic you know thing that is there and this is evolving into grosser and grosser activity so from there this cause and effect starts working but when it comes to this primordial activity in this all pervading space this is there is a base this is there to begin with and something has to be there to begin with so even when you say big bang you are presuming that the big bang is there right and then something mm -hmm. is happening out of it so if you look at this primordial activity in all pervading space then we can talk about this god we have not been uh, talking about it no very purposely because uh, we uh, think that you know we can start observing things ourselves directly and from there we reach to some conclusion that will be more authentic so what uh, we are calling as this all pervading space is this god with capital g god has to be you know understood in terms of the god with capital g and god with a small g and these have been the prevailing notions so this god with capital g is basically talking about the all pervading space the space which is no activity by itself but in which all activities are taking place right so this space is all pervading and space is a reality which is no activity but in which all activities are taking place it itself has no definite shape or size right but all these units which have definite shape and size are in this space right in this all pervading space so all those descriptions are given you know, about the god with capital g so if we have to identify this with the you know existential reality it can be identified with the all pervading space mm -hmm. then we have this small you know gods with a small g right so now there is not one god there are many gods and these gods have you know are basically the self self who was associated with a body at one point of time the self with right understanding with right feeling so this realized self which were associated with the body at one point of time and is not associated with the body you know we are calling them as gods so this god with a small g is an unit and not all pervading and it can you know this god as a realized self can be a source of information for us mm -hmm. so when we say we are worshiping god it means that we are we link to we accept the excellence in this self and we are willing to take inspiration from them and try to become like them so what we call as reverence and worship reverence means 
that I am able to see, I am able to appreciate this excellence okay, in this self that mm -hmm. is, you know, a realized self. And I am able to, I am willing to take the inspiration and become like him. That is worship. So when we are worshiping God, the basic idea is this: that this self, who is realized, who has understood, you know, the harmony and living in harmony, I mean, the feeling of harmony. I am willing to take the inspiration from him. So first I have an acceptance for his excellence and then I am willing to take the inspiration and become like him. That is the meaning of worship. When it comes to this God with capital G, right, this is something which is available to all of us. You know, it is all pervading. All of us are in this, this space, this God, capital G. We only have to realize. We have to see that this, this is available to all of us. And we are all in this space, the all-pervading space. And when we are able to understand this space and realize this space, we see that this is there at the base for all our activity. So we can feel that, you know, being in space, being submerged in space, being, you know, energized in space, being self-organized in space, and being related to every other unit in nature, in space. That realization is important. Mm -hmm. And this is already there. The submergence in space is already there. We only have to realize it. And once we realize it, right, we can see that all, all our need for knowledge, all our need for right feeling, right thought, is fulfilled in space. So I am having that complete sense of freedom, you know, complete sense of satantrata when I am able to realize this. That though I am related to every unit in nature, but I am not dependent on any unit, right, for my being, mm -hmm. for my being, for my knowledge, for my feeling, for my thoughts. All this is ensured by virtue of being in space. And with this feeling of relationship, this feeling of harmony, right, now I am willing to relate to others. That is the meaning of having this feeling of love and compassion, which is based on the realization of this coexistence, realization of this submergence in space. God with capital G is the space, the all-pervading space in which every unit in nature, including myself, is submerged, mm -hmm. in which every unit is energized in space, right? in which every unit is self-organized and every unit is recognizing its relationship with other unit and fulfilling that relationship. This I can realize for myself. And with this realization comes the real sense of, you know, satantrata, you know, complete freedom. And this is what has been, you know, kind of uh, emphasized by different uh, philosophy and different, you know, religions, you know, as being the highest state. So this is being in the kingdom of God, right? God with capital G. This is being you know, um, identified with the Brahma. Yeah, but these are all descriptions, you know, uh, which we have to take it as a proposal, you know, and start working on it you know, and see for ourselves, realize for ourselves. So don't take them as, you know, given reality or as, you know, kind of something to be believed or assumed. Just take them as proposals, as thesis, and work on it. Even as a proposal, I think it's really uh, very beautiful that um, this embodiment of uh, truth, love, compassion, all this is there in that space. And just by virtue of the coexistence, we are able to uh, sort of at least try to work towards that. It's our basic need, in fact. Mm -hmm. See, we have been so occupied with the need of the body because we thought that we are just the body. Now when we realize that we are not just the body but coexistence of the self and the body and it is the self which is playing the central role, then we will start appreciating the need of the self and this truth, this love, this compassion is the basic need of the self. Only when we are able to appreciate this need and fulfill that need, right, we live with human consciousness. We live like a human being. Otherwise, 
we are living like animal right and we are worse than the animal the animal at least has a definite conduct <laughs> right we do not have that definite conduct and that definite conduct will not come unless we have realized this truth right unless we have this love and compassion mm -hmm. it, it will not come so these things may be sounding very high but they are the basic needs of the self and this is what all these people you know these great people have been emphasizing you know mm -hmm. this christ or be it buddha or all these people mm -hmm. this is what they have been emphasizing i mean the whole lot of the stories you know, trying to indicate this seem that and this i mean take it as a story so when buddha realized himself he was requested by this god small g you know that mm -hmm. you know you can now enter into the space of you know this complete freedom okay. and he said that you no know, no i will face towards the world and i will wait and work you know, for everyone to realize so that need for everyone to realize is there whether we are working on it or not working on it and that is what we are saying that this is the role of education the role of education is to help every child to transform himself from animal consciousness to human consciousness so that ultimately they can be source of human society from in human society this mm -hmm. is what we said in the first session right we look at the first session of ehv this is what we are saying that the role of education is to ensure this to transformation transformation from animal consciousness to human consciousness for every individual every human being and transformation from in human society to human society as a collective you know effort of human being and the whole nature so this is sounding very high but this is the minimum that is required for us to live with human consciousness in a human society you had mentioned about you know that god with the small g as somebody who is realized but no longer associated with the body so what happens when a person dies what happens to the self see many of these questions you know um, we have not been um, i mean uh, uh, rather many of these issues we have not been uh, taking up uh, very purposely because uh, you know then too many statements which have to be you know uh, explored and investigated and you know uh, come to some conclusion mm -hmm. uh, if we put too many of them then it creates more you know kind of confusion so <laughs> what we have been trying to do is you know trying to take up those uh, proposals to begin with which can be you know investigated and verified mm -hmm. you know to the best of our uh, you know, kind of uh, effort we have been trying to do this but there are such questions and you know so we try to respond them to them as just giving you know the possibilities of exploration yeah to verify this we would have to die then <laughs> yes so this uh, uh i mean i'm not that you have to really die because people who have <laughs> investigated have uh, done it when they were alive you know associated with the body you know, but there are ways and one of the way this i have just described here is a, you know that while we are associated with the body as human being you know the self associated with the body we can still do lot of investigation about how it will be when self is not associated with the body so when you are saying die it means the self which is presently associated with the body with a particular body it will you know there may be a time when it is not associated with the body mm. and when the self is not associated with the body the body dies so what we can do presently is you know that when we are associated with this body as a human being we can study what is the status of the self and the body like this we can study now in that the question is does the being of the self dependent on the body or the being of the self is not dependent on the body or the activities of the body 
This is one thing we can study. And if we study this, right, we can see that the activities of the thought, of the self, for example, the thought, which is an activity of the self, this keeps on going on, right? So thinking keeps going on, whether we are interacting with the body or not interacting with the body. In fact, when you start observing, and through exercise one and two, we have been you know, trying to do that, that when we start observing the self and the activities of the self, and then we start observing the interaction with the body. We can see that large number of time, we are not interacting with the body. So we give some instruction to the body or we read some sensation from the body as and when we consider it important. But very large percentage of time, I'm not interacting with the body. This we can observe. So when you are grossed, engrossed in your thinking, right? you don't even take note of what is happening in the body. Mm. So you are not reading any sensation from the body. You are not giving any instruction to the body. Mm -hmm. But your thinking is going on. Your thinking is going on. That means that my thinking, my activity of thinking, the activity of thinking of the self is not dependent on the body. Because I'm not, even when I'm not interacting with the body, my activity goes on. Mm -hmm. So this is a very interesting observation. If I can see that my activity goes on, whether I'm interacting with the body or not interacting with the body. Now, once I'm able to see this, I can also see that when I'm interacting with the body, I'm accessing some sensation or I'm giving some interaction to the body. And the only way for me to know whether the body is there or not is by way of accessing some sensation from the body. Therefore, when I'm not accessing any sensation from the body, it is immaterial whether the body is there or not there. So if I'm not accessing any sensation from the body, if you are not accessing any sensation from the body, right? How do you know that body is there or not there? There is no way. Mm. So as far as the self is concerned, it is immaterial whether the body is there or not there. Now, if I can do this you know, exploration and see for myself that my activity does not depend on the activity of the body, my activities are going on, right? Whether I'm interacting with the body or not interacting with the body, number one. Number two, I, by decision, interact with the body, give some instruction to the body or take some, read some sensation from the body. But my being is not dependent on this. My being is not dependent on this you know, interaction. This interaction is taking place once my being is there, you know. So this, Exploration, I think, will be important for you to get a feel of what will happen if the body is not there physically. My conclusion will be that it will not matter because anyway, even when the body is there, I'm not interacting with it all the time. And my activity is not dependent on this interaction. I interact with the body, transact with the body as and when I find it necessary. And most of the time, I'm not doing it. So even now, more than 90% of the time, I'm engrossed in myself. Sometimes when I find it important, I interact, I transact with the body. So at least those 90% time I can see that I exist, you know, without interacting with the body. So this we can see even before we part away from the body. And if we can do it for this more than 90% of the time, we can make the conclusion whether, you know, what will happen when I'm not associated with this particular body, but I will leave it for you to explore rather than believe what is being said. Yes, I hope this makes sense. Yes, yes, definitely makes sense. In various traditions, we use these terms like bondage, salvation, swatantrata. So um, are they implying similar things? Yeah, I can very briefly define them. So bondage means to live with sorrow. So we don't want to live with unhappiness, but when we have to live with happy, unhappiness, that is bondage. When we are free from this unhappiness, that is moksha, that is salvation. So none of us want to live with unhappiness, right? We want to be free from it. Mm -hmm. So we want to be free from unhappiness. That is the state of salvation. That is the state of moksha. But we don't want to stop here. Right? We want to live with continuous happiness. 
So this living with, you know, this possibility of living with continuous happiness is what is called Sotantrata. So that is where we want to reach. And that is what we have been talking about all through. How we can ensure living with continuous happiness. Because that is our basic aspiration, basic human aspiration. That is what is Sotantrata. When we are living with continuous happiness, we are certainly free from unhappiness. So we are in a state of salvation, a state of you know, moksha. And therefore, we are certainly free from this bondage. So this is what we have been you know, trying to work on, how to live with continuous happiness, which is the basic human aspiration. So on our discussion, starting from the first session on EHV to this date, is essentially to ensure this living with continuous happiness, living with this state of Swatantrata. This um, being, you know, having peace, bliss, this would be the same as continuous happiness? Yeah. When we are in a state of continuous happiness, all this is included in it. This peace, satisfaction, the bliss, super bliss. In fact, this is the description of different states of activity, you know, different levels of activity of the self. So this state of continuous happiness, you know, is reflecting itself at different levels of activity of the self. And they are called by different names. So for example, when you have this, at the level of thought, at the level of analyzing and comparing, you are thinking of the harmony, relationship and coexistence, no contradictions in your thoughts. So you have harmonious thoughts. That is what is called as peace. That is what is called as peace. At the level of this imaging and contemplation, when you see that you, know, you have definite participation in this existence, in this nature, and that there is provision for the fulfillment of all your you know, basic participation. So your desire becomes definite and you are assured that you know, the, the fulfillment of the desire will always take place because that is the way the nature is, that is the way the existence is. That leads to a feeling of satisfaction. So all this can be understood now in the light of, you know, being in a state of harmony within, in a state of happiness within, which will reflect in different form at different levels of activity of the self. So at the level of thought, it will reflect as peace. At the level of desire, it will reflect as satisfaction at the level of understanding it will reflect as bliss and at the level of realization it will reflect as super bliss or whatever you call it i mean name you can select yes so there will be many such questions you know ongoing because now we are talking about the whole existence so we'll have a lot of questions but we thought that we will take some of them which may concern us immediately. Yeah, Ganeshi, we can take some questions from the chat. We say self does not perish, only body dies. But as soon as the coexistence of the self and body comes to an end, we do not know where the self is or goes, even when it is said that it is born in another body. It does not remember the previous one. So I wonder why it is so. I feel if self is eternity, it should remember everybody. It takes life into. So, she's asking this. I mean, I can only um, say two kind of things. You know, one is what I have just said about this self being in coexistence with the body, and even now we can see that you know um, our you know existence or existence or being of the self is not dependent on the being of the body. This we can see even now if we work on ourselves. So that is one important thing that we should do, I would say. The second important thing, you know, is this sanskar, this accumulation of our acceptances over a period of time. So, for example, if you visit some place, you have a remembrance of this. But if somebody is asking you after one month, what did you see there? You will describe certain things. Okay? And you think that you remember only those things. But if you visit to that place again, okay, you can recall many things, right? Which means somewhere down yourself, 
that memory was there, but you did not find it important. So you thought that, okay, let it go. Or you have pushed it back into, into some, you know, uh, inner um, kind of memory. And you're not accessing it because you think that it is not very important. But you can study your sanskar, you know, how it is, it is building up you know, your past conditionings, your, your tendencies, right? They are all there. So if you start paying attention to the self and start studying the self, you would see so many preconditionings I have accumulated over a period of time about which I'm not even conscious. But if I start paying attention, I can be conscious of them. Right? This is second thing that we can observe. Third thing you can observe is that if you look at a child, for example, you know, or look at two uh, children born in the same family, and if you observe them, you can see that they have very different tendencies. Even though the family is the same, the parents are the same, the environment is the same. But there is so much of difference in their attitude, in their tendencies. So we have to you know, try to understand this also, this interplay of the sanskar, interplay of the tendencies which is developed over you know, time you know, in our association with the body. The fourth thing that is important in this connection is that those who have been able to investigate deeper into themselves are able to systematically recall all this association with the body. But I would not give uh, you know kind of uh, too much of importance to this to begin with because uh, you know that might become more of a question of belief. But yes, there are people who have uh, uh, gone deeper into themselves and try to uh, recall uh, what has happened in their past association with the body. And then they have uh, described all that. Uh, and now there are a lot of experiments about this regression. You know. A lot of experiment about this regression that they can take you back you know, to your uh, past in this association with the body and even in past association with the body. But this I will give the last uh, kind of uh, preference. The first three you can start working on and you can understand what is happening, how our sanskar is built, you know, how it is affecting us, affecting our very interaction with the world outside, affecting our very world inside. So I was talking about some description about this, you know, different types of these tendencies, sanskar. The one which is uh, very dormant, right? the one which is very weak, right? the one which is diverted, and the one which is active. Right? All this can be studied. All this can be studied, you know, and you can see what you are conscious of, of yourself is very small part. It is just the tip of the iceberg. We are not conscious of more than 99% of our consciousness. So when you start working on yourself and you start digging out your you know, self, then you can see that all this is you know, getting accumulated over this association with the body and also over past association with the body. See, all these are the details which you have to you know, investigate in the world within. Presently, we are too much focused on the world outside, which is important. But it is also important and probably in many ways far more important to investigate into the world within. I am all pervading according to Ashtra Vakra Gita. Is small God dash body is equal to God? See, there is a very subtle difference. When you say I am all pervading and when you say I am in all pervading, very subtle difference. What we are saying is that I am in all pervading. I am in a unit. I am in a unit with a definite, you know, limited size, shape and size. But I am in all pervading. And through all pervading, I am related to every unit. So this realization that I am in all pervading and through all pervading, I am related to everything is what is important. Today, what is happening is that Number one, I am not aware of this all-pervading. And I am not aware of this, my relationship with everything, you know, through this all-pervading. 
Therefore, I consider myself to be in isolation. And many times I consider myself not only in isolation, but in opposition to others. That is creating problem. So it has been said time and again that we have to realize that we are in this all pervading. And through all pervading, we are related to everyone. So this realization that I'm in this all pervading is what we are saying as realization of coexistence. And with this realization of coexistence comes this feeling of being related to all, that is the feeling of love. And therefore we feel responsible towards everyone you know, in relationship, that is compassion. So this truth, love and compassion, this coexistence, love and compassion is what we have to realize. And when we realize this, right, we are in a state of peace, a state of bliss, super bliss and so on. So the issue is basically this, whether I am the all pervading or I am in the all pervading, that Mishra ji has to ask himself. Human being has indefinite capabilities. But human being has to put it in right direction for the betterment from where uh, where he has come. Yeah, see, I mean, why indefinite? We don't want to be indefinite. So we have enough cap capability. That is a good thing to say. That we have our need, need for continuous happiness. And all that is required for ensuring this need for continuous happiness is there in every self. We only have to work on it. This is what we want to say, isn't it? Why call it indefinite? So this understanding, the scope of understanding or scope of all this is definite? Yeah, definite. We can understand the whole existence and be in coexistence with this whole existence. That is the scope, which is very definite. Yeah. And human being has a definite purpose, not indefinite or so he's See, also saying yeah. This sorry. important thing is that we have to understand the essence, you know, and the details. The essence is definite. Details can be too many. So when we focus on the essence, they are definite. And we have this definite capacity to understand this essence and be with this essence. That is understanding this coexistence, harmony and relationship and be with this coexistence, harmony and relationship. This is definite. But when you look at the expression of this coexistence, harmony and relationship, you see so many varieties, right? You do not know how many types of trees are there, you know. So when you talk about these different types of trees and the number of trees, it becomes innumerous. But that is not of importance immediately, you know. What is of importance is that essence. And that and we have the definite capacity to understand this essence and be with it. And as and when required, I can, you know, get the details, get the necessary details of a particular tree, you know, time of its rooting and the way it germinates, the way it grows, the way you know, it fruits flowers and fruits, all that. He's also saying that uh, we are many God and working together for the God with a big G. We are many small God and working together for big uh, this God. See, we don't have to do anything for that big God. <laughs> but this big God is complete in itself. So we have to do something for ourselves and for these other small gods. Yes. Yeah, that is what we are trying to say. That we as human beings have to understand the harmony and live in harmony, right? For ourselves and for others and for everyone. For the well-being of all. But for that capital G, which is the all-pervading space, we don't have to do anything because, you know, it is complete in itself and it is no activity. So whatever we have to do, we have to do for the units in nature be it human being or otherwise. Yeah, and when we have the right understanding, we are, in the, uh, you know, uh, complete in ourselves, And we don't have to do anything more for ourselves, but we are participating with others. That is that uh, what it is? Yeah, but when we are doing, doing something for the other, this other is not the space. 
Uh, other is not the space. Other is other units in space. Does God mean God, Allah, Prabhu, Lord, etc., from all different religions? Yeah. So these different religions are talking about, you know, either the God with capital G or God with small G, right? And when you say God with capital G, it is one. Right? When you say gods. With a small g, there can be many, right? So that pluralism can be there. So you have to find out, you know, take each religion and find out what you know it is talking about. It is talking about this capital G, or it is talking about this small g, God with a small g, and many such gods. Right? That we have to work out. And many of the religions is talking about both the God with capital G, which is basically describing about the, you know, the uh, uh, all-pervading space, and they are talking about this small G, okay, these gods, which are basically the realized self or the self which are you know, working at the higher level of activity of the self. We have tried to understand the harmony and live in harmony. Try to understand the relationship and live in relationship. This is what we find in most of the religions, the and that's what we are trying to do. In in fact, when we are talking about these courses, you know, Uttar Pradesh Technical University is offering a series of courses on human values in different darshan. Human values in Vedic darshan, human values in Bodh and Jain darshan, and now we are, you know, developing this course on human values in Christianity and. Islam. So there we are trying to find out uh, how and what they are talking about this God with small g and this capital G. So that work has to be done with this clarity about the existential reality. We can now, you know, uh, appreciate how these different religions have been trying to uh, sensitize human being, you know, people. To these higher possibilities of uh, uh, human existence, but many times instead of exploring them, these things, you know, and imbibing them uh, in our life, we take it as a belief and we keep fighting for those beliefs rather than taking it as a proposal for our own self development and the development of others. Yeah, there is a lot of. Uh... Although the talk is about love, there is also a lot of uh, wrathfulness. If space is inactive, then how do different units get space in space? So that's okay. Space in space. Yes. How do they get space in space? Yeah, you get a space because it is not an activity. Otherwise, you will, you know, strike against other activity. Yes. <laughs> yes. So it is good that it is no activity. So you have a space where you can move. If it was an activity, you were banged against it, right? Then you would have space to be anywhere, isn't it? An activity going on, something is there. Yes. Then you can't be there. I mean, no other unit can be there. Yes, such a beautiful system it is that you have so much of a space and so little, you know, activities. So that there is enough space for every activity, you can move around. Is the coexistence with the human body has a specific purpose? Who and how and who decides it? No, this is what we have been trying to find out. Yeah. We are trying to find out that our basic aspiration is that of continuous happiness. Right. This is the purpose. Yes. This is the purpose of human being. This is the purpose of the self. And this purpose is fulfilled by way of ensuring right understanding, by way of ensuring right feeling, right? Now, this becomes the program. And this program can be fulfilled through the body also, right? So body is a good instrument to help the self develop right understanding, right feeling, right thought, and also expressing it in relationship. So it is basically the purpose of the self 
program of the self in which the body is used as a useful instrument right to realize this purpose so if you look at human being this is how it looks right that here is a self associated with the body with the purpose of ensuring continuity of happiness or living with continuous happiness and in order to do this it has a program of understanding the harmony and living in harmony and for this fulfillment of this purpose it is using the body as a useful instrument does it make sense i think many of these things uh each of us has to explore them because even if there is an answer and we are not able to see the answer or see the you know we are looking at it as perhaps logic yes or comparing it with something that is in our belief true and trying so what, to come to what i would say is that what we are giving is not answers but proposals which yes. you have to verify and only when you verify and see for yourself there are answers for you yes otherwise it is just a proposal content of our thoughts or imagination is either our memory or objects that we are seeing in the present moment so when self leaves the body not sure memory gets wiped off so this has been i think addressed yeah i mean i am saying that now that we are associated with the body let us make those observations that i described yes right those four things that we said you know you can observe and see what happens when you are not associated with the body and i am saying that you are now you don't have to part away from the body you know to experiment on this because most of the time you are not associated with the body no you are not interacting with the body and when you are not interacting with the body it is immaterial whether the body is there or not there so most of the time you are busy with yourself you are not bothered whether you, the body is there or not there this we can observe right now how to understand the purpose behind my coexistence with my body that means if the body is there then what is my purpose without the body they might be you know i told i told this you know that yeah when the body is there i'm using the body as an useful instrument for my purpose when the body is not there i'm working with myself because that purpose is there with me all the time and i'm working for it when the body is there i am associated with the body i'm using this body as a useful instrument helping me in you know uh, fulfilling my purpose now there are many participants here also yes we can with us if they have any question i can take them up and we have a uh, workshop going on here workshop on non violent communication okay 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 so there are around 35 people uh, some 20 of them from uh, uh, outside kanpur so many of them are sitting here okay for, with us so if there is any question from them we can take up for next 15 minutes yes yeah that would be good that would be nice there is a question and what is saying that if i part away from this body and if i have to take this you know association with another body what care should i take now so that i at least do you know things in a proper manner in the next association with the body is that the question mm-hmm. yes so there has been lot of this you know uh, uh, thought about this you know, people have really worked very extensively on this and they have come up with many uh, kind of uh, understanding and one of them says that if i can become aware of myself my body and the coexistence between the two now then when i am now parting away from the body i can do this parting away with awareness and this is very important that if i am parting away from this body with awareness then 
next time when I'm associating with the body, I can associate with the body with awareness. And that makes all the difference. What is happening, you know, unfortunately, is that we are associating with the body without being aware of the self and aware of the fact that I am associating with the body by choice. So this fact that I am aware that I am parting away from the body by choice will help me to associate with the body with this awareness. So most of the problem that we are causing because of our identification with the body and not being aware that I am the self who is you know, decisively associating with the body. Because of that, there are a lot of problems. So if we part away with awareness, we will be able to solve all those problems. Number one. Number two, if we are able to see that we are the self and we are working for our self-development, then we can do a lot of things when we are associated with this body. So these to some stage. Next time when I'm associating with the body, I will start with that awareness that yes, I have traveled up to this point. And now I have to work further for my self-development. And this body is a good instrument. So I can rightly utilize this body as a good instrument for my further development. So the best thing to do now is to start becoming aware of the self, start becoming aware of the purpose of the self, start becoming aware of the program of the self. Then start becoming of the body and how I'm using this body as a good instrument. So if I do all this and you know, use this body as a good instrument, depending upon what is the status of the health of the body, and then when I find that this body is no more useful, I can part away from the body with awareness. Right? So if I do all this, you know, when I associate with the next body, I will continue with this program. In fact, you see many of these great people, you know, at a very early age, at the age of six, seven, they have started working on themselves. And these are the people who have contributed so significantly even to the society. And many of these traditions, you know, they uh, have this notion of passing on this responsibility, you know, of uh, any particular tradition to this uh, self, which, you know, have parted away with awareness and are associated with the body now with awareness. So at the age of three, four, they will identify such people, you know, and give the responsibility. Like in Tibet, we have a whole lot of this tradition that there is a tradition called Barod, Balod. You know. And this Barod says that when you are parting away, you part away with awareness. So there's a whole lot of system, you know, how to make you aware when you are parting away from the body. And then there is this tradition that, you know, at the age of three, four, you know, you are able to identify these people who, you know, this self who have been seriously involved in this self-searching. And then they have associated with another body. So you pick them up at the age of three, four, five, you know, and then place them in the whole process. So yes, it can be done. It can be done, you know, in the sense that you do it now when you are associated with this body. And then when you are parting away, you are aware of it you know, and you part away with awareness. And in the next association, you are associating with the body with awareness. So for you, it will be just like, you know, moving from one place to another place. But your program remains definite, your you know, purpose remains definite. And if this can be made as part of this, you know, mainstream education, then a whole lot of work can be done. For every child, we can you know, help them to see their ultimate purpose and the program, and also help them to evaluate where they stand, how much they have traveled, you know, and what they have to do next. So we don't even have to wait for the next association with the body. Right in this association with the body, 
you know, they can help and we can help them to understand where they are you know, with respect to their own purpose and program and how they can go further. And if you are going with that awareness, yes, the next association will automatically, you know, uh, be kind of, we would have advanced to an extent that we associate with the body with awareness and then continue with our program. I mean, the important thing is that we have to open up this area, you know, which is more or less closed today. This area of the self is almost closed today. Uh, sir, my question is that if the self is uh, aware and uh, when it is part of the body, if the body, in the next uh, uh, life, is it uh, that uh, the self will choose which body he has to uh, choose? Because according to liking, he can uh, he or she can take uh, that body. According to the skill he uh, developed in the past or in the past life. Yeah, as a sum total of our accumulation of uh, uh, sanskar, we make this decision. So I keep giving this example that if you take this, you know, workshop that we conduct, if there are 100 people in the workshop, okay, in two, three days, you will find some eight, 10 groups formed, right? And like-minded people. You have not done anything. You have not made the group, you know, but they have formed the group depending upon their sanskar, their interests, their likings, and you can understand you know, how it has happened. So like that, we are always making choice, but we are not aware. Right? So how did you pick up those 10 people around you? And you did that, right? Similarly, you keep making choice. So when you are dissociated with this body and you are associating with some other body, you are seeking for, looking for the environment around, you know, people around, the parents, the grandparents, and you know, the environment in that family. All that you are making a decision. Is it? This is the, um, this is the world of the self. We have to understand. And those who have tried to understand this world of the self, you know, I have talked about these things in quite detail. Quite detail. A lot of stories are there. You know, that. These two kinds of self, you know, self who are, you know, very near to realization and self who are very based, you know, kind of uh, very basal or rather very negative, you know, for both of them, you know, it takes a lot of time to associate with another body because they don't find a suitable condition, you know, so they have to keep waiting both for very good self and for a bad, for a very bad self. So then there are a lot of stories about how situations are building and then they associate and then do very good thing or very bad thing. But then, I mean, for us, it is just the stories. So it means, uh, uh, I mean, source to destination jana hai. So whatever vehicle is available, also we sit down there. अपने मंदिर को कवर किए तो हम ऐसा कुछ सोच पा रहे हैं सर कि ये भी सफर ऐसे ही है कि कुछ लोग एक ही शरीर से पहुंच जा रहे हैं और कुछ लोग बीच बीच में चेंज करते जा रहे हैं भाई देखिए कबीर ने कहा है कि अब के मिले महलो है महलो का मतलब इस द पैलेस काइंड ऑफ थिंग यू नो सो एसोसिएशन विद द ह्यूमन बॉडी इज सच अ बिग अपॉर्चुनिटी वेयर you can realize through education and sanskar. So this is the best thing to do, that if we can develop right education and sanskar, then every child can tra travel through this process, you know, and reach to the destination. 
पीएचबी के पहले सेशन में ये बात कह रहे हैं कि हम एनिमल कॉन्शियसनेस से ह्यूमन कॉन्शियसनेस में जा सकते हैं थ्रू राइट अंडरस्टैंडिंग एंड राइट फीलिंग और इस काम को इंश्योर करना एजुकेशन सिस्टम का मुख्य जिम्मेदारी है वो कर देंगे तो फिर बहुत सारी गाड़ी बदलते रहने के उसमें नहीं पढ़ना पड़ेगा बट उसके लिए एजुकेशन सिस्टम को ठीक से डेवलप करना जरूरी है तो हम सब का जो रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी है वो यही है तो हम लोग जो काम कर रहे हैं वो एक बड़ा काम कर रहे हैं महत्वपूर्ण काम कर रहे हैं कि अपने लिए भी पहले रास्ता बना रहे हैं और दूसरे के लिए भी जो है इतना अनुकूलता प्रदान कर रहे हैं कि जेट स्पीड से लोग अपने डेस्टिनेशन तक पहुंच सके तो बहुत जिम्मेदारी का काम है अपने लिए भी और सबके लिए भी और इसीलिए देखिए इसके बारे में आप सोचते हैं ना तो भी बहुत खुश होता है खुशी होती है सोच कर ही खुशी होती है करते हैं तो खुशी होती है हो जाता है तो तो खुश रहते ही आप इस टाइम पर ऐसा दिख रहा है कि जो समझने का सुख है ये सबसे ऊपर जो हम लोग सुविधा का सुख और संबंधों का सुख इसके भी ऊपर है जो बात अगर हमको समझ में आ जाती है समझ का सुख बिल्कुल समझने का सुख ही अल्टीमेट सुख है संबंध का सुख तो उसके आधार पर स्थिर होता है जो संबंध का भाव वो ज्ञान के आधार पे स्थिर होता है घटनाओं के आधार पर नहीं होता है घटनाओं के आधार पर होगा तो शिकायत होती रहेगी कुछ ना कुछ ज्ञान के आधार पर जब समझ मतलब ज्ञान के आधार पर जब हमको संबंध दिख जाता है तो जिसको प्रेम कह रहे हैं उसका निरंतरता होती है कि फिर हरेक को हम संबंधी के रूप में देख पाते हैं हरेक के प्रति हमारे में करुणा रहती है जिसके बारे कल बात हो रही थी ना उस करुणा के साथ हम तो अनकंडीशनली निर्वाह करते हैं इसमें अब दूसरे से वापस कुछ पाने का मुद्दा नहीं है हमारे पास है तो हमारे लिए देने का मुद्दा है बढ़िया है बहुत अच्छा है देखिए हम सब लोग का सौभाग्य है कि हम लोग इस काम में लग पा रहे हैं और उसको कर पा रहे हैं और उससे अपने को भी आराम मिल रहा है और हम दूसरों को भी आराम दे पा रहे हैं तो हम सब लोग का सौभाग्य है ये बढ़िया यहाँ रोक लेते हैं हाँ एक लाइन गणेश जी वी कैन सॉर्ट ऑफ से वॉट टू डू राइट नाउ बिकॉज देर आर दिस विल टेक अस इन टू यू नो लॉट ऑफ डिफरेंट डिफरेंट थाट्स सो वॉट डू वी नीड टू डू हेयर एंड नाउ वी नीड टू डू वॉट वी हैव बीन टॉकिंग अबाउट इन यू एच बी वन यस फाउंडेशन कोर्स ऑन ह्यूमन वैल्यूज में जो बात हम लोग कर रहे थे यू नो स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम आइडेंटिफाइंग आवर यू नो पर्पस आवर बेसिक ह्यूमन एस्पिरेशन ऑफ कंटिन्यूटी ऑफ हैप्पीनेस वी हैव टू स्टार्ट वर्किंग टू अंडरस्टैंड द हारमोनी एट डिफरेंट लेवल्स ऑफ एग्जिस्टेंस एंड बी इन दैट हारमोनी एट डिफरेंट लेवल्स ऑफ एग्जिस्टेंस दिस इज वॉट वी हैव टू डू एंड सर्टनली वी हैव टू स्टार्ट विथ अंडरस्टैंडिंग द हारमोनी इन ह्यूमन बींग you know harmony at the level of self harmony with the body and you start working on that then we have to understand the harmony in the family the relationship and then we have to work for this you know fulfillment of relationship leading to mutual happiness then we have to understand the harmony in society and start working for ensuring this harmony in the society starting from the right kind of education in sanskar and the health system and so on then we have to understand the harmony in nature right and we have to ensure this mutual fulfillment with rest of nature this is what we have to do this is what we have to do and then we will be able to slowly understand the harmony in existence right and when we understand this harmony in existence then we will have this answer to all these questions that we have been talking about so that will be an a natural outcome of you know developing our own competence of understanding the harmony and living in harmony so that is what we should do yeah, and there are these two things you know one is the um, sort of a crisis situation and one is you know when there is crisis when that crisis is not there so there is some homework that can be done you know in the education in the when this crisis or whatever is not there yeah. so there is plenty of time to do that yeah in fact what we have been talking about right from the beginning is that you know we have to work for this transformation to human consciousness and transformation to human society 
and the best thing to do is to work through education and sanskar right that we have to do if there is no crisis that we have to do even if there is crisis right and if we do that through education and sanskar we will overcome this crisis or the crisis will not be there exactly yes so that is the context in which we are talking about all this working for the right education and sanskar and we are fortunate to be you know a part of this education and sanskar system and this education sanskar is the highest you know activity of human being so that is what we have to do whether there is crisis or there is no crisis we have to work for human education and sanskar for ensuring this transformation from animal consciousness to human consciousness and transformation from human society in human society to human society okay thank you much very much i can we can stop here for the day yeah so we'll meet tomorrow tomorrow we'll uh, you know do the next lecture uh, there yes. is a request from sivdasan ji that you know we keep it for open only for questions so that uh, maybe we'll spend more time on the questions or uh, we can do that question okay. session uh, after SS. tomorrow day after tomorrow we'll cover up the essence tomorrow yeah the next and then take up the question because it is in continuation with this only yes 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 thank you very much okay namaste to all thank namaste. you very much